So far, we have mainly talked about data that can be found in the household survey. There are actually two surveys that the BLS uses to report the labor market data. Today, we'll talk about the household survey and the establishment survey. The household survey is part of the current population survey administered by the BLS every month. This is where the BLS reports unemployment and labor force participation numbers. The other survey that the BLS uses is called the establishment survey, and it is used as a measure of labor market strength as well. The establishment survey is where you get data on how many new jobs were created and the average hourly rate for that month. A complete picture of the labor market will take both of these numbers into consideration. When the BLS reports its numbers on Jobs Friday, it includes both uh, the number of jobs created and the unemployment rate. For instance, in July of 2020, the economy created 1.8 million new jobs and the unemployment rate fell to 10.2%. In this video, we'll talk about where to find the most recent job reports and what information is present. So let's head to Google. I usually search for BLS new releases and it's the first hit usually and it will take me to the BLS's new releases page. Click on it and it should take you to the most recent release of all data that the BLS collects. You can see inflation and prices on here as well. Next part of our course we'll discuss inflation so we'll be back to this page. Scroll down to the employment situation. Once you click on employment situation, you will see the list of tables that you can access. Tables denoted by A mean that they come from the household survey. Tables denoted as B mean that they come from the establishment survey. You can see just how much information is being shared and all of this information is usually summarized just in two lines in the news. The first three links will give you the summary. The first link is the overall summary, the second is the summary to the household survey, and the third is the summary of the establishment, establishment survey. Let's check out the household survey. You can see that the table provides data from last July, that's a year ago, then provides data from the past two months, May and June, then reports the current data for July. The data provides unemployment rate by demographics, age, gender, and race. It also provides information on duration of unemployment. This will help us understand how long people are unemployed for. It's important because it can tell us if unemployment is temporary or if it's a long-term problem that we're facing. You will see that the household survey also reports the number of discouraged workers in the economy. Let's head back and look at the establishment survey summary. The establishment survey provides us with the number of jobs created and it provides a breakdown by industry. So we can see which industries are growing and which ones are shrinking. The establishment survey also provides us with the average hourly rate, which tells us how labor market conditions are impacting wages in the economy. By looking at this data over years, we can see how major events in the US have impacted labor markets and we get to understand our history. So let's look at this data visualization that I absolutely love. It represents the net job gains or losses in U.S. metropolitan statistical areas. Blue circles mean that the MSA experienced job gains. Orange means job losses. The bigger the circle, the larger the gain or the loss. Let's look at this over the past 15 years. Let us see if we can see major U.S. events. The graph ends with June 2020 data, so let's see what happens in the U.S. what happened in the U.S. recently. So the graph starts with January 1999. I don't know where you were January 1999. I know exactly where I was. I was at the University of Louisville doing my undergraduate degree in economics. So once we play this, we start to go into the first recession in U.S. history that uh, is represented here, which is in 2001. So let's see if we could see what happens in 2001. We're starting to see the majority of the U.S. shift to orange and the circle is getting bigger and bigger. Now we're leaving the recession and going into our expansion phase of the 2000s. This is where the housing boom started. I got my first job in December of 2003. Life was amazing during this time. There was a lot happening, a lot of growth.
I don't know if you saw that, but in August of 2005, something happened in Louisiana. Do you know what happened? That's when Hurricane Katrina hit. It's amazing that we could see that in the data, isn't it? All right, so now we're starting to get into the beginnings of the recession, uh, the Great Recession that's due to the housing market crash. And you will see Miami, Arizona, and California experience the first losses. And then it goes to the entire United States. And the entire United States is in orange now. And we're leaving 2009, getting into 2010. We're starting the expansion. And uh, everything should be going well. Uh, some parts of the country are not growing at the same rate as uh, other parts of the economy. And when we get to... Uh, 2020, uh, let's see what happens uh, in the economy with respect to unemployment. Are you anticipating what happens in 2020? All right, we're almost getting there. It's August of 2019. Here we go. Wow. Did you see that? That's just how many jobs we lost in 2020, or June of 2020 to be more specific. Seeing it tells us how drastic the unemployment situation is uh, due to COVID-19 and the recession and the pandemic that arised uh, since then. So this makes all these numbers come to life so we could understand the impact of unemployment on the economy, on the people, and understand how we could um, uh, why it's important for us to study this and hopefully come up with policies to help mitigate these situations. So what we did is we looked at the household survey, the establishment survey, discussed the difference between the two and how to find this data, which is very valuable. A lot of people hear about unemployment and they just take the news, uh, the, the word of the journalist uh, uh, as a given. Uh, what I want is for you to have the, uh, the skill set to go out and find that data by yourself and make your own decisions. We also took a look at a data visualization. I love data visualizations and I told you we're going to see more of these um, with respect to the job numbers, the employment numbers, which is from the establishment survey and how those job gains and job losses were reflected in the U.S. history in the past 15 years. It brings to life the importance of what we're learning. So hopefully after this uh, content, you have a better understanding of what unemployment numbers are, labor force participation rates, establishment survey, and the limitations of all of these uh, measures that we're talking about. No data is perfectly complete. Uh, we have to see it from different dimensions and be able to analyze it. And now you have the skill sets to do that with respect to unemployment information or labor market data. Um, Try out the problems to go with this chapter. I think you'll find that uh, applying this information is as important as learning the definitions. See you in the next class.